When we talk about the radical move to the left by the Democratic Party, it is obvious from yesterday's elections that this is the case. So yesterday, a guy named Joseph Crowley was ousted. He was, he was expected to challenge Nancy Pelosi for the speakership. So how old is the Democratic Party? Nancy Pelosi is 78 years old. Joe Crowley, who is 58 years old, right, he's just slightly younger than my dad. Joe Crowley was seen as the heir apparent to Nancy Pelosi. So he was the up and comer. He was the fresh face, the 58 year old. Well, he was ousted yesterday in a Democratic primary to, by a woman named Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who's 28, a first time candidate and an open member of the Democratic Socialists of America. So she's a Bernie Sanders socialist. And she is a former bartender. She was bartending until about five minutes ago. She's a graduate of Boston College, or Boston University, rather, in 2011. And she is wildly to the left. When I say she's a leftist, I mean she is an insane leftist. Not only does she believe that Israel is genocidal, she also favors Medicare for all, abolishing immigration and customs enforcement. She suggests that there should be a job for everyone provided by the government. She believes that there should be a minimum wage of $15. She says, quote, when it comes to power, we can't just be tempted by power and money alone. What we need to do is be bold enough and courageous enough to choose leadership that takes no corporate money and advances health care, education, and housing for all. So this is another one of her programs, is housing for all. So she is a full-scale redistributive socialist. And uh, she's really, really radical. The reason that she won in the district is because nobody came out to vote. Only 5% of, of uh, registered voters, eligible voters in this district, actually voted in this primary. It was on a really weird day. There were only a grand total of about 27,000 votes in the primary total. She won about 17,000 of those. Also, Joe Crowley did not take his district particularly seriously. He'd won 10 consecutive terms, so he didn't spend any time in that district. Nonetheless, this is the dawning of a new era for the Democratic Party. They've fully embraced Bernie Sanders' socialism and Maxine Waters' nuttiness. Here is this new hero of the Democratic Party, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Here she was today after winning the primary. She'll win the general, too, because this is a heavily Democratic district, claiming that ICE, right, Immigrations and Customs Enforcement, is running black sites on the border. Black sites being like CIA sites set up in Jordan to torture people. She thinks that's what's happening on the American border because she's a crazy person. I think that ICE is right there as a part of it. It has um, extra, its extrajudicial nature is baked in to the structure of the agency, and that is why they're able to get away with black, uh, you know, with black sites at our border, with the separation of children. Um, we are we are committing human rights abuses on this border and separating children from their families. Okay, so one of the reasons that Joe Crowley lost this election also, number one, he wasn't radical enough for the district, but number two, one of the things that's been happening in his district is that it's moved to a now majority-minority district. It's, it's a heavily Hispanic district, uh, and he was one of the last remaining Democrats living in a heavily minority district uh, who was a white guy. Uh, so there's been a real shift in racial demographics in this particular district, and that was reflected in this election as well. She is a deep radical, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. She will be treated as an up-and-comer. She'll be treated as the new heroine of the left, of course, because she's a pretty young woman, obviously, and also she is talented at what she does. So, I mean, she's, she's a good face for the Democratic Party if you like socialism. If socialism is their thing, she's a much more attractive candidate on every possible level than Joe Crowley, except for the fact that she is a radical, insane person. So here she is talking some more in a debate about ICE and trying to go after Joe Crowley's folks, trying to suggest that, uh, that Joe Crowley is not extreme enough on ICE. If this organization is as fascist as you have called it, I've said it's fascist. and you have said it's fascist, then why don't you uh, adopt the stance to eliminate it? This is a moral problem, and your response has been to apply more paperwork to this situation, to have ICE collect more information on immigrants, and that puts our communities in danger, and it also conveys a profound misunderstanding of how we should be approaching this problem. You she wasn't the only uh, radical who was elected last night. Ben Jealous, who's the former head of the NAACP, won Maryland's Democratic primary for governor on Tuesday. And he promised to deliver an agenda that makes college free, legalizes marijuana, and raises the state's minimum wage to $15 an hour. So the Bernie Sanders full-on Medicare for all, legalized marijuana, raising the state's minimum wage. I don't care about the legalizing marijuana all that much, but making college free and raising the state minimum wage, all of this stuff is really radical stuff. And you're seeing a significant move, a really heavy move, toward the, the far left among Democrats. Now, that, that clip that I just played you of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez showing righteous indignation against Joe Crowley because he doesn't want to abolish immigration and customs enforcement, because he doesn't want to abolish the people who actually enforce the border, you know, that sort of righteous indignation is now what animates the Democratic Party. Uh, it makes the Democratic Party feel special. It makes them feel as though they are authentic. 
This is one of the big problems in American politics generally right now, and this is true right and left, is that people are mistaking decency for insincerity. That if you are a decent person and you don't want to go after people hammer and tongs and you are not demonstrating sufficient passion, that means that you are not authentic. Really authentic people are people who can't keep their emotions in check. If you're truly authentic, you're the kind of person who pounds the table, right? You're the kind of person who looks across at your opponent and yells at them. That's true authenticity. And that's how we know that you're a decent, authentic person and you're not just a political phony, is the more you yell and the more you scream and the more emotional you are, the more we believe that you're an authentic human being. Well, I think that that is about as stupid a policy as you can have when it comes to voting for candidates. Unfortunately, it's being adopted on both sides of the aisle, but the Democrats have fully embraced this stuff and they're moving radically to the left politically as well. President Trump said yesterday the Democrats have become the party of Maxine Waters and Nancy Pelosi. There's no question. Nancy Pelosi is now the moderate in the Democratic Party. Nancy Pelosi is now representing the moderate wing of the Democratic Party because the up-and-comers are all Bernie Sanders acolytes.